and um, we welcome everyone. Today we'll talk a little bit about uh, mindset. It's my privilege to be here. Shall we say a word of prayer? Thank you, Father, for your love and your mercy. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Father, give us open minds and we acknowledge your spirit and your presence with us. Guard, guide, and direct and protect us, we pray. In thanksgiving, amen. Some events in our lives remain with us almost forever. And many of you can remember your wedding day. We were married 27 years ago or more, 1997. I can't count without my calculator. <laughs> but um, I still remember lots of details of it, almost the entire everything. We remember the birth of our children. We remember the death of our loved ones because these events are significant to us. I remember 9-11, September 2011, or 2001 actually, 21 years ago when the Twin Towers fell. I remember exactly where I was and what I was doing. I was in a hotel about to have breakfast in McAllen, Texas, because at the time I was living in Orlando, Florida, but I was on an audit assignment in Texas. I remember. I also remember the Chilean miners. Do you remember that event? This was 2010. 33 Chilean miners trapped underground in a mine. Well, what happened? Here's what happened. They were in the mine, mining their own business. It was, it was the San Jose copper gold mine in the Atacama Desert in Northern Chile when a huge explosion happened. What really happened? It wasn't an explosion. A portion of the mountain fell in the tunnel. And this portion of rock from the mountain was so huge, it would be measuring about 45 stories and over 770,000 tons. So it was huge. They were trapped for more than 69 days underground from the 5th of August until the 13th of October. Five kilometers or three miles from the entrance to the mine, they were so close, but they knew when that happened, their situation was dire. They could not get out and no one could get in. Can you imagine the thoughts going through their minds? The 33 men quickly realized there was no way out, no way in, and they will more than likely die, suffer from starvation or dehydration or some other event. In the end, it took 17 days before they made contact with the outside world. And another 52 days before they were finally rescued. When they came out, they were all alive, all in good conditions, except maybe a few medical, needing medical attention. A major reason why we were all drawn to this event was the amazing survival mindset of these miners. They put every survival skill they learned into practice to make it out. And what did they tell the reporters? They said from the very outset, early on, they decided they must survive. Their mindset helped them. As Christians, we too must have this survival mindset. Ephesians 5 verses 2 to 17 tells us, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Further, we're also told in Isaiah 26, verses 3 to 4, that God will keep us in perfect peace if our minds are steadfast on him, resolutely or dutifully firm and unwavering loyalty to God and the mission. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast, unswerving loyalty, because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. Survival skills. While we may not face the same type of 
extreme physical situation as those miners, we do face similar extreme spiritual situation. A disaster of epic proportion occurred when we sinned. We also have our survival kit. What is our survival kit? Put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 18. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on all of God's armor so you can be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. We're wrestling not against humans, but against principalities, powers, evil rulers in high places. But put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still you will still be standing firm. You will come out alive. You will survive. Another vital text in our survival kit brings back memories. Memories when I try to apply this text. And it's not easy. It's not easy. I'll share it with you. It's Galatians 2 verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. I no longer live rather, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. To live in a fallen world means we struggle. We struggle with sin on a daily basis. We experience heartache and pain, injustice, inhumanity, disasters, staggering loss seem to be the natural order. Discord and trouble are commonplace. None of this was in God's original plan. Our world and all creation groans under the consequences of our sin, and we seem trapped underground in a mine shaft. The good news? The good news, God does not intend the world to continue to groan forever. Every effort, just like they made every effort to save those 33 miners, God has already made every effort to save him by sending his son to die on the cross. And he still continues to make that effort by infusing us with his Holy Spirit. Romans 8 verses 25 through 27. While we may not know what God wants us to pray for, the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings which cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us in harmony with God's own will. In conclusion, I tell you, take heart, be encouraged, or 69th day is at hand. Remember to cast all your fears upon the Lord, all your cares, all your fears, all your concerns upon the Lord. Remember, tomorrow belongs to the Lord. Have you ever found yourself struggling with today while fearing tomorrow? Worrying makes us feel frazzled, worn out, anxious, afraid of everything and nothing, real and imagined. For survival and success, rest in prayers of peace, prayers of hope, prayers of deliverance, prayers of submission, prayers to God. All of these contain the power to break the enemy's hold over us. Remember this truth, when trouble strikes, tomorrow belongs to God. All 33 miners were practicing a one man, one vote democracy. They worked together to maintain unity, to look after the mine, to look for escape routes and to keep up a morale. They all had a common goal to survive. Sharing a common goal made it possible for them to work together as a team to encourage each other. As believers, our common goal is that we can be reconciled to God and thereby receive salvation and the promise of eternal life. The miners encourage hope. They interviewed one, his name is Avalos, and this is what he said. As a group, we had to keep faith. We had to keep hope. We had to all believe that we would survive. When someone had a bad day, the others in the group encouraged them. We were determined to keep hope alive throughout the entire ordeal. 
Every day after lunch, the miners gathered for prayer. So my message to you today, dear friends, is to be encouraged. Our 69th day is coming. We are five kilometers or three miles from breaking forth into eternal life. When everyone will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds with great power and glory, friendship with God will be restored. God's image and likeness will be restored in us. True peace and prosperity will prevail. Above all, with Christ's grand deliverance, when he comes back, he will furnish and finish setting up the work of eternal redemption and we will inherit eternal life. As we perfect our survival mindset and our survival skills, remember Matthew 6, verse 34, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. As we await our 69th day, continue to fight the good fight of faith. Hold tightly to eternal life to which God has called you. Hebrew 10 verses 24 through 25. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good work. And let us not neglect our meeting together, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Our 69th day is at hand. May God continue to richly bless us as we continue in the nurture and admonition of his word.